Hi guys, how's everyone today? I decided that today I would talk about pre-you. So what is pre-you? Well basically it is the you before you now. Okay, I'll explain that. Um, if you follow any channels, any uh, spiritual observances, if you even have a religion that looks into this side of things, um, your spirit came to earth and then formed into a baby. Which is kind of like standard thing. We would go, where does the spirit come from? Does it come with the baby? No, it comes before the baby. It, you could say that the baby is the crystallization of the spirit. Okay, so before you were a baby, you were a spirit. For those of you who understand past life regression or the fact that all our lives are actually happening right now instantaneously, um, you'll understand that there is you know, movement between the lives. And there's that time that um, you will be between lives and maybe checking out the Akashic Records and deciding what life you'd like to do next. Now, okay, this is where it gets a little bit complicated. Eh, kind of. Okay, so basically you decide who your parents are going to be. You probably had an agreement with them before they became your parents, okay? Before they were born. So you've decided that you're going to be the child in this family. And so you come down as a baby and you're born. Now there's all different possible ways of doing this. You could be a replacement soul, the soul that's already there, decides they don't want to do it anymore, so another soul comes in, that could be you. That could The soul that's in there could just be a piece of you uh, as one of the shards of you. So you, uh, as a, a higher self, can send out different versions of yourself. And you've sent out the, the quiet, shy self. And once the quiet, shy self has had its turn, it disappears and the new soul comes in. So it's a bit like having a change of battery. Body's still working, but the, the soul, the energy behind the body is slightly different. Okay, so if you are crystallizing yourself and coming to Earth and becoming a baby, and then to take on a life, you want to know exactly what's going to happen in that life. Now, obviously, you still allow for the fact that on Earth we have free will. By the way, I'm going from the point of view of you as the person planning this, okay, rather than you the baby. Right, so you're the person planning your life, and you're thinking about coming down as a baby and living on Earth. And so you're looking at all the different uh, situations. You might be thinking, oh, you know, I haven't been murdered before. Maybe I'll choose that life, or wow, that, that uh, life as a poverty-stricken guy who dies of starvation, that sounds really exciting, I want to try that life. Or that beggar on the street, wow, he's got a great life, I want to try his. So, as a spirit, you really don't see the difficulty, you just see well, that's an interesting experience, and basically that's as far as it goes. And um, so there's no real, oh, uh, this is negative, this is positive, this is bad, this is good. This is going to be an awful situation, this is going to be a fantastic situation. It's more like, well, that's interesting, I might try that. Okay? So, you come to Earth, and um, you've got your life. But what you don't know is, in your life now, is that you made plans during your life. You've already planned out this, this whole lifetime. So it's not necessarily completely following the law of attraction in that in this life you think about what you want and it'll manifest. Because during your, your timeline, so to speak, considering there's no past and no future, and we choose our times as we go, each, each second we have a new past. Um, take that on. Okay, so you have planned markers throughout your life. Now these markers might be uh, people suddenly appearing that you weren't expecting. You certainly didn't think about these people in ha appearing in your life. You never wanted to attract these people in your life because you like not necessarily a bad or a negative thing, but you never even it never even occurred to you that you could attract someone like that, just totally outside your sphere, and suddenly that person appears. And it's kind of like um, and a good example would be uh, Daryl Anker having UFOs suddenly appear to him to get him on the right path. They were his marker. Um, you have other people who have had markers in their life that that uh, change their lives, like my marker. Um, actually, I've had quite a few, but um, I'll tell you mine. When I was 29 and sleeping in a share accommodation uh, one day, uh, I suddenly had this dream that this 
giant gold shield appeared to me and gave me a message. Problem was, I couldn't quite understand the message in words. It was given to me in feelings. And when I got the feeling, I just yelled in this dream, I'm not ready. And I woke up. And since then, I've been thinking about that dream. And that was my little marker to get me to start thinking about this because I've been an atheist most of my life. Uh, basically, um, I was very good at disproving uh, a lot of uh, Christian theories <laughs> or Christian beliefs, and that's what I used to do. In fact, uh, I don't think it really gave me pleasure, it was more frustration with people. What I later realized, and that's another story altogether, when I won't be going into it, but what I later realized was the people I was actually having these arguments with and, and actually eventually convincing them to change their mind about a few things. Um, they were beginners. The, the true spiritual people in whatever religion it is wouldn't be the slightest affected by anything that I would have to say. And so I was, uh, yeah, challenging these people. Um, and yeah, ultimately it was, a, it was a waste of time because they weren't even at the level where you could um, have a proper um, discussion where they could bring out proofs to defend themselves, so it was quite easy for me, so in that sense it was pretty bad. Anyway, shouldn't have done it. Sorry, all those people. <laughs> um, so, getting back to this. Um, so you put these markers in your life, that was my, one of my markers. The second marker was to meet this uh, German girl who, even though we didn't have any kind of relationship, we weren't going out or anything like that, um, I needed to help her with her move. I was the only one who could help her with getting her stuff back to Germany for her because she had to go back to Germany quickly for her job or something. And I was the only one who could do that. Uh, and we stayed in contact. So there was no real connection of any kind. We had, we didn't even have similar interests. But um, one uh, year she just, out of the blue, for no reason whatsoever, she sent me a copy of the book The Secret, and that's what led me on my path, because atheist, read The Secret, oh my god, you know, mental explosion, and then testing, of course, because I always have, I have a very methodical, scientific kind of, the way I think needs to have proof, and so uh, reading The Secret and seeing all these people uh, giving me all this information um, and proving it. And so, of course, even though all the evidence was there, I decided to prove it for myself, and it worked. And I was totally, totally blown away, and that completely erased all the history I had before, and all my viewpoints I had before, and started me on a new, more spiritual path, slowly and surely. So then, I uh, moved into understanding the Dolores Cannon, and then into Bashar, and then other channelers, and information that way. And um, getting back to what I was saying, so that was my second marker. Now, there were other markers in my life, people I met, situations that have happened, all leading me towards this path. And because those markers exist, I am now back on the path, I believe, that my original pre-self had planned for me. So I can just imagine uh, my pre-self looking at the timeline of what I was going to do and going, yeah, yeah, he's going to have a bit of fun, you know, all the way to his 30s and then and then we'll put this thing in to wake him up a bit and then we'll put this other thing in to wake him up a bit more and then and then we'll start. So it's like, wait until I'm 40. <laughs> so 40 I start, great. And I'm just thinking all these pre-selves out there are probably doing this, had done the same thing with a lot of lives and going, well, you know, around about 40, let's, let's wake them up a bit. So we'll, we'll do this and do this and we'll have this situation and this terrible situation happen and this wonderful situation happen and da 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 da. Him or her. So, my question in this video is, you, your pre-self has planned your life for you. It's given you the corridor to walk down. Now you can sort of go different ways along that corridor, of course. You have free will to choose what you want to do, but until you complete the lessons that your pre-self has chosen or had the experiences that your pre-self has planned, you're unlikely to die, no matter what happens. I've actually died three times, I believe. Um, motorcycle accidents. In fact, they, they seem to hunt me down. <laughs> yeah, it's like a, um, yeah, 
mental problem thinking there's going to be a motorcycle attack me. No, it's not like that. Now, um, when I was a kid, almost missed, uh, almost got hit by a motorcycle. But the thing is, it was one of those, how did I escape from that accident kind of situations. And then when I was in Italy on, on a holiday, another situation. How did I escape from that motorcycle situation? And then the third one in Sydney um, a few years ago, there was, you know, what stopped me in the middle of the road from running to the next lane when I was going full pelt at a high acceleration across the road? I was suddenly pulled back and I just stopped and this motorcycle went <laughs> and I'm just thinking, these were the three times that my pre-self had planned and just in case they were, they were kind of like, um, how would you put, uh, detours or off ramps, you know? So you put all these little plans in place for your escape route or your off ramp or time to go time. So if you're having a difficult time of it and this thing happens, you've got a choice to get off this life and go to the next one or at that point you can have that time reverse and that not actually happen. So you'd have a situation where you shift to an alternate reality where you didn't get killed by the motorcycle. Okay, so I'm pretty sure there's a motorcycle waiting for me sometime in the future when I decide that it's time to take the off ramp and uh, hopefully that's not anytime soon. <laughs> so anyway, so I thought I'd do this really weird all over the place video um, and uh, let you think of all these different concepts which all lead back to pre-self and what your pre-self has planned for you. So think about it, go through your life in your head, try and figure out what markers exist, what, what has your pre-self set up for you to encounter in your life so that you would be on this path that you are on now. Okay, that's my challenge for you. And I'd love to read your comments. Okay, peace and light.